Let's consider a simplistic view of limiting reagents. So I want to make some bicycles. So what I need is some frames and I need some wheels and those together will actually make a bicycle. Okay. Now just like with any equation in chemistry we need to balance it. So for every one frame I need two wheels and that will produce one bicycle. Obviously in chemistry we do. We don't write the ones because if it's on the page we assume it's there once. Now this time I'm going to give you 100 frames, 70 wheels. How many bicycles will that make? Now you might think it's obvious, however we're going to go through the process because it's identical to balancing equations. So I'm just going to summarise what I have. Okay, so how about now what do we need? I can either start off from wheels or frames, it makes no difference. So if I have 100 frames, it is a 2 to 1 ratio, so it gets larger, so pick the bigger fraction. So that means I will need 200 wheels. I obviously don't have 200 wheels, I've only got 70. So therefore the wheels are limiting. So to work out my calculation for bicycles, everything is going to be based upon my limiting reagent. So this is a 2 to 1 ratio. So I times it by half because the 2 turns into 1, it gets smaller. So that means I will produce 35 bicycles. Now you may say, what happens if I started from wheels? Well, it's exactly the same thing. I have 70 wheels. How many frames will I need? So it's a 2 to 1 ratio, so I times it by 1 over 2. That then gives me 35. I have 100 frames. I only need 35. So this one is an excess. So if I had worked it out the other way, it makes no difference because it will still tell me that this is the limiting reagent to actually calculate the final answer. And that is it.